सी आई ई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंट्स ऑडियो बुक हेल्थ एंड फिजिकल एजुकेशन द टेक्स्ट बुक फॉर क्लास नाइन्थ चैप्टर वन हेल्थ एंड डिजीजेज वन पॉइंट वन इंट्रोडक्शन वी नॉर्मली रिलेट द टर्म्स डिजीजेज एंड इलनेस इंटरचेंजेबली इन रिलेशन टू हेल्थ इवन दो दीज वर्ड्स डू नॉट मीन द सेम Health is the general condition of a person in respect to all aspects of life. It is also a level of functional and or metabolic efficiency of an organism. The word metabolic is the adjective of the term metabolism, which means the whole range of big chemical processes that occur within us or any living organism to produce energy and basic materials needed for important life processes. diseases and illness adversely affect these processes and thus health diseases and illness are interrelated however health is not just being free from diseases illness or injury as defined by world health organization who health is a state of complete physical mental and social well being and not merely an absence of disease or infirmity 1.2 what is illness let's now see how is illness different from that of disease while illness and disease are at times used interchangeably these in fact are different from each other disease refers to a biomedically defined deviation from norms of body function or structure whereas illness is the experience of this deviation it is a state of experience by the body when one or more of the control systems of the body are not functioning normally illness refers to a subjective distress feeling of a person when one is sick or suffering from some disease however it is not appropriate to conclude that anyone being merely free from illness or disease is healthy You might have seen people suffering from various types of diseases. Some of the diseases like high blood pressure affect only a particular person who is suffering from it. On the other hand, some diseases like common cold spread rapidly and affect a number of people in a very short period. You must have often wondered as to how does this happen? In one of the chapters of your textbook on science, you would have studied about why we fall ill. In that chapter it is mentioned how diseases are caused and how some of these affect only the persons who suffer from them are called non communicable whereas there are those diseases that are transmitted from one person to another are known as communicable the chapter also mentions how communicable and non communicable diseases can be prevented and controlled page number 2 activity 1.1 discuss with your classmates why we should not go to public places when suffering from cold cough or fever 1.3 communicable diseases let us understand how communicable diseases are spread these diseases are caused by certain infectious agents which may be bacteria or viruses these are capable of being transmitted from person to person or from the environment to person 1.3.1 classification communicable diseases can be classified on the basis of the causative organisms these are as follow bacterial typhoid cholera tuberculosis viral common cold influenza hiv infection dengue protozoal malaria kala azar fungal fungal infections of nails groins skin hair parasitic infestations of intestinal worms like roundworm or lice modes of transmission the modes of transmission can be classified as direct and indirect transmission a direct transmission as we have studied in our earlier classes direct transmission of diseases takes place as follows direct contact or touching When we touch a person or come in direct contact with the skin or mucous membrane of the diseased person it transmits infections like skin and eye infection droplet infection 
स्प्रे ऑफ ड्रॉपलेट्स ऑफ सलाइवा और सिक्रेशन ऑफ अ डिजीज पर्सन स्प्रेड्स कॉमन कोल्ड ट्यूबोक्यूलोसिस मेनेंजाइटिस कॉन्टैक्ट विथ सॉइल कॉन्टैक्ट विथ सॉइल कैन कॉज एक्वायरिंग द डिजीज एजेंट डायरेक्टली एंड मे स्प्रेड डिजीजेज लाइक हुकवर्म इन्फेस्टेशन एंड टेटनस इनोक्यूलेशन इन टू स्किन और म्यूकोसा सर्टन डिजीजेज स्प्रेड इन अदर वेज फॉर एग्जाम्पल रेबीज इज स्प्रेड टू ह्यूमन्स फ्रॉम एनिमल इट इज जनरली नोन दैट इट अकर्स ड्यू टू अ डॉग और अ मंकी बाइट हेपेटाइट इज अकर्स ओइंग टू वायरस ट्रांसमिटेड थ्रू कंटेमिनेटेड नीडल्स द एच आई वी ह्यूमन इम्यूनो डेफिशियंसी वायरस कैन बी ट्रांसमिटेड बाय सेक्शुअल कॉन्टैक्ट और थ्रू ट्रांसमिशन ऑफ इन्फेक्टेड ब्लड फ्रॉम एन इन्फेक्टेड पर्सन एच आई वी कैन बी ट्रांसमिटेड बाय द एच आई वी इन्फेक्टेड मदर टू बेबी and can cause aids acquired immune deficiency syndrome page number 3 b indirect transmission communicable diseases are also transmitted indirectly in the following ways that are popularly known as 5 f's flies fingers fomites material capable of carrying infections like towels handkerchiefs etc food and fluid some diseases are spread through water food ice blood and body tissues and organs for example typhoid diarrhea polio intestinal parasites and infective hepatitis flies contaminate food and other eatables a living carrier also known as a vector is a disease agent that lives on or inside the body of the carrier causing diseases like malaria and plague Airborne infectious materials transmitted through droplet infection or dust cause diseases like respiratory infections and itch mites. Fomites are objects like towels, handkerchiefs, toys, glass, spoons, etc., which we use daily. Eye and skin infections and dysentery, diarrhea with blood, are spread through these fomites. our unclean hands and fingers act as disease causing agents and transfer infection to food through skin nose and causes diseases such as intestinal parasites dysentery typhoid healthy people can also spread disease if they are carriers these are the people who themselves may be immune to the organisms they harbor but can be a source of transmission to others as happens in the case of typhoid 1.3.2 prevention and control of communicable diseases the following measures help in prevention and control the spread of communicable diseases personal hygiene bathing every day and clean clothes keep our body free from harmful microbes cutting nails and washing hair regularly brushing teeth twice a day morning and night particularly after meals ensuring that your ears are clean do not share articles that are of personal use that is towels soaps toothbrushes combs razors and other toiletries wash hands before touching food or water and before eating or drinking wash hands with soap and water before touching your face eyes and mouth and also before and after using the toilet Many microbes like virus, bacteria and fungi are transmitted by touching surfaces with hands and become potential carriers. Hence by washing hands we can prevent diseases like diarrhea, flu, skin and eye infections. Now time for some activity. Activity number 1.2. List how many things you follow for food and water hygiene. Discuss the list with your friend. What would you like to do to improve your personal hygiene? Page number 4. Activity 1.3. Have a round of your school. Find out the environmental sanitation. Discuss with your classmates. If it is not good, what will you do? Prepare a plan and implement. Now coming back to the chapter. Food and water hygiene. Drink potable water. If it does not appear clean, boil or filter and then consume it. Eat only freshly prepared food or consume 
it within four hours of preparation. Do not purchase and consume fruits and vegetables which have been cut and kept in the open for a long time. Keep all food articles covered to prevent contamination by flies. Environmental Sanitation Use sanitary latrines. Avoid open-air defecation. Throw waste in dustbins to avoid breeding of flies. Clean the drains regularly. Regularly check the places where water is collected and has the possibilities of mosquito breeding. Spray insecticide to prevent breeding of mosquitoes. Try to prevent contamination of drinking water. Source of water should be away from source of garbage collection or waste disposal site. The container of drinking water must be kept at a clean and safe place. Vaccines Vaccines boost immunity and thus helps the body fight diseases. A large number of infectious diseases can be prevented by taking vaccines at an appropriate time, such as diphtheria, pertussis, polio, tetanus, rabies, measles, chickenpox, typhoid, etc. Treatment of diseases using medicines. Medicines kill microbes and or slow their growth. These are classified as antivirals, antifungals, antiprotozoals and antibiotics according to the group of microbes they act upon. However, these medicines should be taken in the recommended dose and duration as advised by the doctor. One should avoid self-medication. Isolation of patients with communicable diseases. Patients suffering from such diseases that are communicable should be kept in a clean environment isolated from others. Education and Awareness It is important to make people aware about communicable diseases, their causes and modes of spread. We have one more activity for you. Activity number 1.4 Prepare an immunization chart. Put it in your classroom. Discuss with your classmates whether Everyone has been vaccinated. If not, request them to consult a nearby health center. Page number 5 People should also be made aware of their responsibilities towards control of communicable diseases. Example, ensuring use of safe water, healthy food and proper management of garbage and waste disposal. 1.4 Non-Communicable Diseases the non-communicable diseases may occur due to genetic and lifestyle factors. When these are caused by an unhealthy lifestyle, these diseases are also called lifestyle diseases. Risk factors of non-communicable diseases include lack of physical exercises, poor dietary habits, inadequate sleep, stress and habits like smoking, taking alcohol and tobacco chewing. An arbitrary classification of non-communicable diseases can be Lifestyle diseases such as diabetes, hypertension, heart diseases, stroke and cancer. Mental health diseases like depression and trauma. Now we will discuss behavioral risk factors which can give way to manifestation of the physiological risk factors and ultimately lead to the diseases. 1.4.1 high blood pressure or hypertension. Behavioral risk factor, unhealthy diet. Physiological risk factor, blood pressure. Disease outcome, heart disease. Next behavioral risk factor, physical inactivity. Physiological risk factor, blood glucose. Disease outcome, stroke. Next behavioral risk factor, tobacco use. Physiological risk factor, cholesterol. Disease outcome, diabetes. Next behavioral risk factor, alcohol use. Physiological risk factor, weight loss. Disease outcome, cancer. Next behavioral risk factor, stress. Source, National Program for Prevention and Control of Cancer, Diabetes, Cardiovascular Diseases and Stroke. A Guide for Health Workers, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India, New Delhi. For details on BMI, refer to Chapter 4, Activity 4.2. Figure 1.1 Risk Factors 
Dietary Factors All packaged and canned food items contain a very high level of sodium because of the presence of salt that is used as a preservative. If you are in the habit of adding table salt to your food, you are consuming excess salt. Use of excess salt is linked with hypertension. Hence, consumption of excessive salt in daily food, packaged and canned foods need to be avoided. Sedentary lifestyle and lack of exercise You can put on excess weight if you do not exercise daily. This excess weight and lack of exercise can lead to hypertension. Now we have a box on the page, page number 5, box 1.1. If one is obese, one has a high chance of getting diabetes and hypertension. Hypertension increases risk of getting heart attacks and strokes. Diabetes mellitus affects all parts of the body like brain, eyes, heart, kidneys, blood vessels, muscles and nerves if precaution is not taken. Page number 6 In addition to taking the prescribed medication, doing regular exercises and taking high-fiber diet can help one to control hypertension, mental stress and chronic anxiety. People who cannot manage stress and constantly worry about things are prone to hypertension. Hence, one needs to learn to cope with stress in a healthy way by doing meditation and yoga and diverting attention by observing healthy mental habits like listening to music, reading, writing poems, pursuing a hobby, etc. Tobacco use Intake of nicotine, either through smoking or chewing tobacco, may lead to hypertension and should be avoided. Consistent use of tobacco, gutka, khani, etc. has been linked to various types of cancer. The consumption of tobacco, therefore, must be avoided. Endocrine diseases Diabetes mellitus is one of the endocrine diseases. It is caused due to inadequate secretion of the hormone insulin from pancreas. Insulin regulates the level of sugar in our body. Lack of insulin causes increase of sugar in our body, leading to the condition called diabetes mellitus. Common symptoms of this are increase in hunger, frequency of urination and growing thirst. Until recently, most children and adolescents with diabetes were thought to have type 1, insulin-dependent diabetes. However, type 2 diabetes, mellitus, DM type 2, among children is now being increasingly reported from several parts of the world. Adolescents who are obese are more likely to get type 2 diabetes, which is manifested as high blood sugar. If untreated, it leads to complications in kidneys, eyes and other organ systems in the body. Diabetes can be managed primarily by bringing about changes in lifestyle and physical exercises and medication. Hereditary Disorders Genetic disorders such as haemophilia, thalassemia, muscular dystrophy and hereditary diseases which run through generations in a family. Constant care and support may help the concerned individual manage these disorders. Now we have another activity for you. Activity number 1.5 Interact with your group and note the causes that lead to hypertension on a chart. Make a list of processed foods that contain of high level of sodium by reading the label. You are just listening to this audiobook. Narrator Neeraj Yadav Technical Coordinator Buddy Langlingdo Sound Recordist Shanu Moksim Assistants in Production Ruchi Sharma Directed and produced by Vimilesh Chaudhary. This audiobook is presented to you by CIET and CERT, New Delhi, India.